Here, normally, I would not be standing in this spot. I would be somewhere over here starting the race. I'm Mel Kalkowski, the race starter and announcer. And uh, we would be running dog teams down this street, uh, going in that direction for a 25-mile run. However, as you can probably tell, this is not the snowiest year we have had in Anchorage, Alaska. So uh, we are going to do the dedication ceremony that would be normally in this time. Normally at noon, we'd be starting a 20-team dog race that we had signed up for this year. Right, Janet? Uh, I'd like to introduce race marshal Janet Clark, who is still the race marshal, even though the race is not here. Uh, she and the crew did the best they could last week, as you were probably aware, we had a huge rainstorm. Uh, they were shoveling snow, and I'm told as fast as they were shoveling it onto the trail surfaces, it was melting right back off. So uh, they tried right up until last week to make this work. Our Keystone cops are about. If you don't have your fur Ronde button, you probably want to duck in there before they see you, because they're, they're checking it out here, and they're going to make sure you're, they're enforcing Ronde rules around here. And somewhere out here, I did see the King and Queen Regent, and I believe our Lord Lady Trapper, we're somewhere in the group. There they are, they're back there. Uh, and Rondi Queen and Princesses, come on over, the, you, you can scoot out this way. Let's hear it for Rondi Queen and Princesses for this year, Miss Rondi. And our King and Queen Regent and our Lord Lady Trapper, who have all uh, been participating in for rendezvous. Don't, don't fail to take in all the rendezvous activities that are going on. To move along, however, this is the dedication ceremony. We'd like to begin by introducing Mayor Dan Sullivan to kick things off and say a few words. Uh, Mayor Dan, your final rondi as mayor, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, thank you, Mel. Kind of a bittersweet moment. Uh, last opportunity as mayor to preside over some of the wonderful, wonderful functions that characterize our great winter festival for Rendezvous. Named by National Geographic last year, the best winter festival in the world. So be proud, Anchorage. Yeah, let's give ourselves a hand. Well, on February 15th of this year, we lost uh, a true legend, George Atla, uh, passed away at the age of 81. And he left a mark on the Mushing community, the Anchorage community, and the world community that is indelible. And we want to make sure that we commemorate his legend uh, with this new commemorative arch. It'll be the George Atla Arch. It's in the concept stage now, but we've been working really hard. Uh, Susan Duck, who heads up our centennial celebration, uh, and other folks have come together and conceived an arch going over uh, 4th Avenue here uh, from D Street to the sidewalk. Uh, with a mushing motif, and this will be the new mushing district for Anchorage, and it'll be the George Atla Arch. You know, I first met George Atla, I was a, when I was a young guy, what we did in the summer at 8, 9, 10 years old was we sold newspapers up and down the streets of 4th and 5th Avenue, which meant you're in the bars, the barber shops, all these different places at, you know, at a young age. In those days, that was not unusual. Well, in 1962, during the Ferrandi, I'm kind of prowling around the sidewalks, and one of the bar owners knew me, and he said, hey, do you want to meet George Atla? He's in the D&D Cafe having a cup of coffee. So I got to go in and be introduced to George Atla, and he said, well, what's your name? And I told him, well, Dan Sullivan. And he says, where are you from? I said, well, I'm born up in Nenana, but lived in Fairbanks and just moved to Anchorage a couple of years ago. And he said, are you any relation to, to Marshal George Sullivan? I said, well, yeah, that was my dad. And he says, well, he's a really good man. You better listen to everything he says. And I said, yes, sir, Mr. Atla. And I said, oh, by the way, you're going to win this year. And guess what? He won that year. So <laughs> I'd like to think I was George's good luck charm that year. <laughs> he won that year. And in 68 and 72 and 75, and 76 and with 10 for Rondeville championships, eight North American championships, he truly was the iconic musher for Alaska. He got to tour the world with his dog sled team and introduce the world to the sport of dog mushing into Alaska. We could not have had a better ambassador. So I'm so glad you've all come out here today to help celebrate, help commemorate, help dedicate the George Atla Arch. Now all we can do is get it funded and get it done. Let's go, Anchorage. Coming up next, Lacey introduce Julie Sullivan, who has a few words, and she's going to be uh, letting us know about the arch and how things are working here. So, Julie, your turn. Hi, thank you. It's great to be here today. I'm um, Julie Fate Sullivan. I have the great honor to say a few words on behalf of my husband, uh, Dan Sullivan, the not Dan Sullivan, but the, yeah, Senator Dan Sullivan. Um, and it's an honor to to speak and say a few words about our Husleya Hustler, who 
left such an amazing mark on the sport of dog mushing as we know, but also who was just an amazing human being unto himself. He, um, my mom, Mary Jane Fate, and George uh, went to Mount Edgecombe together for a while, and she used to tell me some funny stories about him when they were younger. And then later on, my dad, um, who also bred, he bred sled dogs, he got a few from George's line, so we had about 40 of them in our backyard. And, um, and George, after, we lived a quarter mile from the dog mushers in Fairbanks, and uh, every so often, George would pop in, he'd say, oh, I'm just coming in five minutes for a cup of coffee, and he'd stay for a couple hours. And um, gosh, I wish I could have sat there and remembered everything that they used to talk about, a lot of the old days, and those old days of, you know, dogs and mushing, and all those old ways with my mom and dad. But what an honor today, I, um, I can't think of a better way to to honor his memory and um, thank you everybody for coming out to this. And of course George was a dog musher, no question about that. He is by the way the only person to not win a heat in a world championship and still win the race. He holds that distinction. He came in second all three days, but his cumulative time, because other people have been winning, different people won each day, his cumulative time was satisfactory for him to be the champion that year. So that's another distinction about George Atla. With that in mind, I now am proud to present Alfred Atla, who is the brother of George Atla. George made Alfred a winning sprint racer, he says. He takes all the credit. When George was ill, he asked Alfred to take over coaching Joe, who is his grandson. So let's welcome, please, Alfred Atla, the brother of George Atla. It's hard to believe I was. I barely walk up those steps. <laughs> it's kind of hard to speak of this, but we miss our brother. I love my brother very much. And he put me in this position. He asked me before he passed on that if he does pass on, to make sure to help Joe Bifold pursue what he tried to help him pursue, and that was to race this anchors race. And now he's going to be racing the North American. And that's what he asked me to do. So I'm helping Kathy and Joe to take care of this. But most of all, George, during his lifetime, he gave and gave and gave. And even though he's gone, he's still giving. He start, he's trying to make his last run. So the grandkid is trying to do it for him. But he, ordered, he wanted to be there, but that, that's just the way things go. And part of the program, is my late brother's son. He started a program named Frank Atta Program, and this program is to help younger people pursue whatever they want to pursue, but a lot of it has to do with dog mushing and helping those that need help. And to tell you that, there is one of them here, one of their Sams, he had his ups and downs, and now he's going through treatment through that Frank Atlas program. And this was all started by donors, by donors, and it has not really gotten on its feet yet. But to be honest with you, I think it will. Yesterday, I approached Worthington Ford to help be part of the donor on this program 
They held the Frank Atla program, and the Frank Atla program is under over, I mean, is over a racer, Joe Bifold. And Worthington Ford said they'll be one of the donors. I really thank Worthington Ford. You cannot thank them enough because they have 50 donors so far, but it couldn't, it does not completely cover everything. So Worthington Ford stepping in is a big help. Thank you, Worthington Ford. And also about my brother, like I said, he gave and gave and gave. It's time for us to give back. Maybe the state of Alaska will wake up and pursue the same thing he pursued. Yeah, and I have a few people to thank, but I'll highlight the program. Part of the Frank Atla program of Kuslia has been help, quite a help, not only the, to the two students, Joe Bifel and Daryl Sam Jr. I'll get this thing in the, into act yet, I'm not used to this. But I do have some people to thank. Huh? Anne Mc... Anne Mc... Food. Huh? Ruby Rain. These are some of the main sponsors of this program. Wright's Airline. Wright Airline. Okay, and the people I'd like to thank very much is Victor Damaski, who volunteered to haul my brother from Anchorage to Fairbanks in a vehicle. And they said every town, just like if it was a checkpoint, was out there with signs, just like if he came to a checkpoint all the way to Fairbanks, and then the last five, six miles from Fairbanks, there were 50 or more cars leading them out. I thank those people for doing that. And i also like to thank Kathy for hitting this program and Patty for donating a couple months to help Joe. Arlie Reynolds, thank you. Janet Clark. Greater Anchorage for trying to help and putting up Joe and whoever was helping him. Thank you. Also, the Greater Anchorage plus the Dog Mustard Committee of Anchorage. I thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Up next is Joe Byfeld. He is George's great nephew, and uh, George picked him as the first student of the Frank Atla sled dog program. So, Joe. Hello, everyone. My name is Joe Byfeld. I'd like to thank you all for coming out here. I just see my grandpa smiling down on all this, <laughs> saying, "Wow, that's pretty neat, huh?" <laughs> and uh, what I was inspired to do by my grandpa was to be the best that I can be in all areas of life and um, and to never give up 
just keep on going, you'll find out, you'll find it and just, uh, another thing is, like, all the stories you've been telling me these last five months, they're all in the back of my mind, and even if he's gone, like, in a way, he's still here because all those stories are still with me and I can, um, I can still learn from him. And, um, another thing I learned from him was to always be thinking, like, winning thoughts, positive thoughts. Like, to be around, to train the winning dog team, you always have to be happy around the dogs. And I found out that you really have to love what you're doing because, you know, you have to be happy. You can't, the dogs, they're smart and they know if you're not happy or you're mad. Or, so you always have to be happy around the dogs in, in a way. I learned that you have to be happy in all situation, situations in life and just enjoy yourself. And that's what I learned from my grandpa, George. And um, the journey training for the rendezvous is it's a lot of work. And like I said, you have to think happy thoughts. That, that's what I learned. And when I found out the race was canceled, I thought that you got to look at, it, look at it in a positive way and just look ahead. So we're going to be uh, looking ahead towards the North American. Uh, I'd like to thank all the sponsors that are uh, sponsoring the Frank Atlee Youth and Sled Dog Care Program. Uh, like my grandpa said, he said, uh, Wrights Air, Animate Dog Food, Cal Worthington Ford, Ruby Marine. Uh, there's like 50 other private donors, just all the supporters. My cousin Shalisa Atla for making the Atla Kennel sweaters, and Janet Clark, and uh, everyone who helped put this event together. To honor my grandpa George. And, uh, thank you. And now at this time, Arlie Reynolds, come on up here. He is a friend of George for over 30 years. Some of us have uh, go back that far in the 60s and 70s. He is currently the reigning Rondi and Open North American Champion and the Associate Dean for the Department of Veterinary Medicine at the University of Alaska Fairbanks, Arlie Reynolds. It's truly an honor for me to be uh, able to say a few words about George. Um, he was an incredibly complex and passionate man and um, I knew him both as a competitor and as a mentor. Um, as a competitor, I don't think you'd ever meet anybody who was more fierce than George. Um, honestly, I hated to race against him. He was really hard to beat. I don't think he ever entered a race where he not only thought he could, but thought he should win. And most of the time he was right. He's probably the most mentally strong person I've ever met in my life. Um, he knew about psychological warfare before anybody else knew what to call it. And uh, he was great about defeating his opponents many times before they ever got to the starting line. Uh, one time I was up with him on the Kaikuk River and he pointed across the river and he said, well that's, that side of the river was Eskimo and this side was Kaikuk Athabaskan and we were fighting each other for centuries and you know when they, when they study the Kaikuk and Athabaskans they always say that we're the most warlike of all the Indians. And he said that's why we have so many champions here. And uh, I think he was right. Um, George is one of the most resilient people I've ever met. He could take something that the rest of us would think of as a really big disadvantage and turn it into a real advantage for him. Um, I, I've never seen a guy who, who was keep himself so motivated. One of my favorite stories about that was in 1985 um, when uh, Eddie Streeper won the North American. Eddie was a young, very brash, uh, guy in his 20s and he turned to George and, during the, the banquet and said, oh, George Atlas washed up. And because uh, George had come in last that year. Well, George took the red lantern and he hung it over his bed so that every morning when he woke up, he'd hit his head on it. And it, and it would remind him how hard he had to work. And he'd come back and won the North American the next year. He never let anything hold him back. You know, as a, men, a, a mentor for me, um, George taught me many things, and it wasn't always easy, Joe could probably tell you, um, being mentored by George because he expected a lot of you. I always felt like I was a piece of steel that kept getting heated up and then pounded on and heated up and pounded on until I was tough enough. And truly, that's probably one of the greatest things he taught me was how to be strong and to never give up. 
And I don't think I would have been strong enough to be a champion without being mentored by George. But he was also a very spiritual man. He had lots of visions. Probably my favorite story that he ever told me was how he taught his dogs to run in unison. It's a very hard thing to do. He said he had a dream one night where he saw a moose running through deep snow. And there were a pack of wolves chasing that moose. And the lead wolf would run and then the wolves behind him would go in and out of the holes that that wolf made in the snow. And in that way, all those wolves were taking exactly the same stride through the snow. So each year, he would take his dog team out and run two or three runs in ungroomed trails with really deep snow. And they would get tired, but they would learn to jump into the holes the dog made in front of them. And after you put them back on a groomed trail, they would keep that synchrony. And it makes the team run much more efficiently. And that's the kind of guy George was. He would solve problems and he would have these visions and he was always thinking about ways to do better. You know, uh, George left us many legacies. The absolute best book ever written about dog mushing is the book he wrote, Everything I Know About Training and Racing Sled Dogs. I've got a copy of it and it's so faded and folded over, it's, some parts of it are hard to read. Um, he also gave us the most iconic movie about our sport and Spirit of the Wind, and it still stands today as, as one of my favorite movies of all time. But I think the most lasting legacy that George left for all of us is what he did after he retired from racing and setting up the Frank Atla Youth and Sled Dog Care Program. And the way that he has been such a, uh, an inspiration to the youth, not just in Hoosley, but, Hoosley, but across Alaska. He told me that he started that program because when he moved back to Hoosley, he found that the young folks didn't really know where they came from. And they didn't really know where they were going. And he wanted to bring that back to them, so he used dog mushing as a way to reintroduce them to the way that people had always lived there. And that's not just dog mushing, but fishing for dogs and hunting and tracking and all these outdoor activities that are part of life. It had an amazing effect in Huslia. You know, not only did they have some champions come out of there again, but it helped increase graduation rate in the high school and decreased a lot of the social problems that face a lot of the youth across Alaska. It also transformed that entire village. Not only were the young people affected, but their parents worked hard to raise money and pull together to support them so that they could travel outside to race. And for the first time in a long time, the elders of that village, which were the last generation to really mush dogs, had something that they could relate to the young people with. It brought the village back together as a community. And I think it stands as a model for a lot of our rural communities in Alaska as a way to reestablish the, co the community of those villages. Uh, the other thing that George did with this program, he didn't just keep it in Huslia, he, he brought it to everywhere he went. And I remember see, visiting with him in Fairbanks when he had just come from the youth correctional facility there, where he'd met with young folks there to tell them that, hey, you made a mistake, but it's not the end of the world. You can, you can get yourself back on your feet. When you get out, come see me and we'll work together. And he was good on his word. You know, I, I had the pleasure of traveling with George to Alakakit this fall to talk to the Yukon Kayakuk School District about this program. There are nine schools in that district. All nine of them want this program instituted in their school. This program was the culmination of everything that George learned and accomplished in his life. And it was his vision to make it available to youth across Alaska. I believe that it will be his greatest and most lasting legacy. And that he started this, it was his vision, and now it's our, our opportunity, and I think that it, it's really our responsibility to carry this on for him. So thank you so much for being here. I hope that when you think of George, you think of not only the great champion of dog mushing, but also the champion of youth in Alaska. Thank you. As I say, this would normally be the time when we were starting a sled dog race here on 4th Avenue. And you all know we do a countdown, the team start on a two minute interval. The World Championship sled dog race began in 1946 and it's only been canceled four times in all those years. It has had days we've had to cut out of the racing. <coughs> However, it is the first time we've had to cancel a race uh, in several years here. So, normally if we had the kind of tribute we're doing today, we would start with a ceremonial start for the musher that we're honoring. It's been done once before for Orville Lake. 
Uh, today we'd like to do the same thing for George Atla. And at the same time, I'd like to ask Rodney Queen to come up and join me for just a moment to unveil what the arch is actually going to look like. And I'm going to have her do that. What we're going to do is give you a one-minute countdown. At that point, we will have a moment of silence for George. And the Rondi Queen will unveil the Adla Arch that we're going to dedicate here on this day. All right? One minute. seconds. Fifteen. Ten. Five, four, three, two, one, go. George Adler leaves the street, I'd like you all to bow your heads for a moment of silence. Thank you, everyone. Hobo Jim's going to be playing. You can visit with our local mushers and their dogs. We do have dogs dropped out here if you want to go see what kind of sleds and equipment they've got. You're open and welcome to do that. The Anchorage Museum is going to have free admission to a showing of Spirit of the Wind, a tribute to George Atla. And we hope that you'll be going to see that today. And with that in mind, I'd like to thank you all for coming down here today and joining us for the dedication of the George Atla Arch, which will be dedicated very shortly as soon as we get it funded and get it built. We look forward to seeing you uh, down here when that comes up. And next year for the World Championship Sled Dog Race that will be held here on 4th Avenue at noon that Friday that starts off the Ferrandevue. Thank you all for coming.